The absolute worst thing you can do as a Tesla owner is to ignore the most expensive part of your car, the battery. The battery not only determines the distance you can travel, which is probably the most important feature of any electric vehicle, but it also has a huge effect on the car's actual value. So you absolutely want to take care of it. However, as an owner, there's not much you can do to care for the battery other than optimize your charging. And I've driven 135,000 miles in my Tesla Model 3, and my battery still has 95% of the original capacity, which is really impressive. And a lot of people ask me, hey, Andy, how do you get so lucky? Well, mainly it's due to me researching and practicing good charging habits, all of which I'm gonna share with you in today's video. First, you should know that Tesla uses more battery chemistries in their vehicles now compared to when I got my Model 3 in 2018. The main difference being that the standard range models use lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries compared to the long range and performance models that use nickel based or NCA batteries. But most of these tips apply to both unless otherwise specified. And my first charging tip is to not overspend on an expensive home EV charger if you don't absolutely need it. When you first order your Tesla, you should have two charging options to choose from one is the $230 mobile connector, which is essentially a 20 foot long charging cable for your car. Or you can get the wall connector, which is twice as expensive, but it looks nicer. Now, if you have a large budget and you want the fastest charging available in a nice clutter free design, then yes, go with the wall connector. It can provide up to 44 miles of estimated range per hour of charge based on your vehicle. However, I think the mobile connector is the best charging solution for most people because it's not only less expensive, but I think it's more useful as well because if you go on a trip, you can just throw it in the front so you can charge at home with it or you can charge on the go with it. So it's useful in that way, unlike a permanent stationary charging solution such as the wall connector. And one of the best things about the mobile connector is that it allows you to charge on a normal outlet, just a regular outlet. If you had that in your garage or anywhere around the outside of your house, you just plug your car up to it and charge that way. Now that is the slowest way to charge, but if you are on a strict budget and you drive less than 50 or 60 miles per day, then that honestly could be enough to keep your car charged uh, without spending any more money on additional charging equipment. For example, my wife's Model Y behind me, a standard outlet with a mobile connector. We just plug it up and it's enough for her to keep the car charged and drive wherever she needs to go. Now for my Model 3, a normal outlet could provide about 60 miles of range overnight if charged for 12 hours. However, if you're like me and drive more than that each day, the mobile connector paired with a $45 adapter on a NEMA 1450 outlet is probably the best bang for buck solution for home charging. Not counting the cost to install the actual outlet, this is about a $275 charging setup that can provide 30 miles of range per hour of charge for my long range Model 3, which is plenty fast enough for nearly anybody's driving habits. And for the first five years, this is how I charged my Model 3 nearly every day and it worked perfectly. But after recently moving to a new house, I upgraded to a wall box EV charger, thanks to the awesome electric company who installed it and who is also today's sponsor, Mr. Electric, a neighborly company. In addition to professional EV charger installation, Mr. Electric delivers comprehensive electrical services for homes and businesses throughout the US and Canada. According to a 2023 survey from Mr. Electric, 20% of homeowners surveyed are likely to purchase electric vehicles this year, and 21% are likely to upgrade their electrical panels. Every three years, the National Electrical Code is updated to maintain the safe installation of electrical equipment and wiring, so it's important to schedule an electrical home safety check to ensure that your electrical system is up to code. Chances are, there is at least some part of your electrical system that could use maintenance or an upgrade. Mr. Electric provides a wide range of services from installing EV chargers, light fixtures, and ceiling fans to upgrading and repairing electrical panels, circuits, and surge protectors. Professional installation from an expertly trained Mr. Electric electrician is recommended for the safety of your home, family, and electric vehicle. Click the link below or visit mrelectric.com Andy to learn more about EV charger installation options and to get an exclusive install offer. So now you know my home charging setup for both of my Teslas, and now I can get into my next big tip, and that is to use low voltage chargers as much as possible 
and only use supercharging on road trips when absolutely necessary when you're traveling away from home. I had a bunch of free supercharging miles, but I decided not to use them because I prefer home charging. It's just way more convenient. It's cheaper. 95% of my charging has been done at home on low voltage, slower charging setups like the slower normal outlet and with the Neiman 1450. And it seems to have served me very well based on my battery health on my Model 3. Now there are three levels of charging that you need to know about for EVs. The first level is the slowest. It's level one charging and that is basically the normal outlet that I showed you with my wife's Model Y. Level two charging is a little bit faster than that and that's what you'll see in public chargers that are in places of interest and destinations and hotels like that. And level two is also all of your home EV chargers such as the wall connector and even the NEMA 1450 setup. And level two also includes the wall box EV charger that Mr. Electric installed here for my Model 3. I just use this with the J1772 adapter that comes with all your Teslas. Level 3 is the fastest charging method right now and that's what all your Tesla superchargers are and your Electrify America DC fast chargers for non-Teslas and you want to avoid level 3 as much as you possibly can to maximize your battery longevity just because the main difference between level 3 uh, compared to level 1 and 2 uh, what makes level 3 so fast is that it pumps power directly into the car's battery using DC power. That's mainly designed for road trips as you can tell. Now, a lot of Tesla owners, including even Elon Musk, have stated in the past that supercharging will not affect the battery too much in the long term. But there is some data that backs up the claim that level three supercharging speeds up battery degradation. Researchers from the Technical University of Munich support this claim through the research that supports a correlation between voltage, state of charge, and temperature. The level one and two chargers used multiple times per week did not accelerate battery degradation while level three DC fast charging did accelerate battery degradation. So with all that being said, in my experience, using low voltage, slower home charging for the majority of your charging will probably benefit you in the long run when it comes to optimizing your battery health. Now we can get into the next tip and that is to know all about state of charge, also referred to as SOC. It's basically just the battery level that it's currently charged at. If you go into your Tesla touchscreen and go to the charging section, you should be able to see the charge limit section here. So the Tesla will automatically charge up and stop at whatever uh, limit you set it at for this particular location. I always set mine to 80%. I've done that from the very beginning. And that goes back to the early recommendation from Tesla, and that is for, for NCA batteries, for nickel-based batteries. If you have an LFP battery or a lithium iron phosphate battery with a standard range vehicles, you can go up to 100% for your daily driving and it won't really uh, degrade the battery that much. It's pretty negligible. If you're on a nickel-based battery like I am, I've always charged at 80% for my daily driving because uh, of my commute. And this is kind of going to depend on how much you drive for your daily driving. So for example, I use 40% of my battery every weekday that I commute to work. I leave from my house in the morning with 80% of charge level, state of charge, and I get to my workplace with 60%. And for eight hours out of the day, my Tesla sits in the parking lot at 60% state of charge. And then when I get home, it's at 40% charge and it sits like that until around midnight. And that's when it charges from 40% to 80%. So if you look at my daily commute, my state of charge levels are basically for the majority of the day sitting between 40 and 60% state of charge. And that is ideal for these types of lithium ion batteries. In fact, Jeff Don recommends a 40 to 70% state of charge for the optimal health for a lithium ion battery. If you operate the battery uh, in a friendly way, which means maybe charge it only to 70 or to 80% routinely, and don't discharge it below 30, 20% routinely, that vehicle is gonna last you an incredibly long time. You have to sit down and figure out how much daily driving that you do and then change your state of charge limit accordingly. And that brings us to the next tip about state of charge and that is to use the most narrow range of state of charge as possible for your daily driving. And that usually boils down to keeping your car plugged in as much as possible. So basically you wanna be charging 
every single day instead of every other day, for example. I'm in between 80 and 40 every single day instead of between 90 and 10. So the narrower that range is for your daily driving, the better it's gonna be for your battery long term. When the battery uses a wider range for daily driving, it causes the cathode to expand and contract and that causes it to break apart. And that brings us to the next tip, and that is to only charge up to the state of charge that you absolutely need. Avoid going to high state of charges. Tesla makes this very simple. When you look on nickel-based batteries, you can go on the charging screen here, and I go past 80% for my daily driving limit. Uh, it's going to say 80% recommended for daily driving. For LFP batteries, you can definitely go past 80% and not really see any effect long-term, but for nickel-based batteries, it's very important that you don't go past that unless you absolutely need to. Even on long road trips, uh, usually Tesla will actually navigate you to superchargers along the way to avoid having to supercharge past 80%. I mean, it's okay to do it occasionally. In fact, I, I actually do that for my road trips. I will charge to 100% uh, the night before or at least set it to where it ends uh, at 100% right before I leave. High state of charges, you know, anything above 90% frequently is going to be way more detrimental to your battery compared to going down below 20 or 10%. And speaking of killing your battery, the next tip is about avoiding high temperatures for your battery. Now, a lot of people think that like cold temperatures and winters are, are really bad for your battery, but that's not really the case. A Tesla has software that does a really good job at protecting the battery in cold temperatures. It's actually worse for your battery to be in very high temperatures. So if you are charging, make sure you're charging somewhere in the shade or, or in a garage or some type of cooled environment. Supercharging out in the blazing hot sun in the middle of summer a lot would will be detrimental to your battery. So uh, high temperatures and high state of charges are very bad for your battery. That's just the thing to keep in mind. And I highly recommend setting a schedule for charging at home. You can do this within the charging section here, just enable that, or you can switch to the scheduled departure and schedule a time for you to leave. So uh, I actually prefer the uh, scheduled departure because if you know you're gonna leave every day by 7 a.m., you just set it to schedule the departure at 7 a.m. for this location. And it will uh, not only charge overnight uh, when it's lowest, the off-peak charging, you probably get the lowest electricity rate, but it'll also uh, time it to where it'll finish charging right before you leave. Although it's okay to charge to 100% every now and then for road trips, you don't want to uh, leave it at 100% or above 90% for a long period of time. So at the end of the day, the best way to take care of your battery and char when charging is to avoid really high state of charges as much as possible. Avoid uh, leaving your high state of charges if you do go that far. Avoid going all the way down to 0%. Avoid being in very high hot temperatures while charging. Don't go past 80% for your daily driving if you're on a nickel-based battery. Set your charge limit appropriately based on how many miles you drive per day. Make sure you're using the narrow range of state of charge for your daily driving. Charge at home on low voltage chargers as much as possible. Avoid supercharging only when you need to on long road trips and utilize the tools and settings that the Tesla gives you uh, for scheduling your departure or scheduling overnight charging so that you can have your Tesla stay within that 40 to 70% state of charge as much as possible during its lifetime. I think if you follow all those tips, you will probably have good luck with your Tesla battery over the long term. By the time I reach 200,000 miles in this car, I'm hoping to see at least maybe 90% of battery capacity remaining. We'll see if I can hit that goal. So let me know how your experience has been with your Tesla battery. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.